Thomas the tank engine was glad to be home. It was his first morning back after having his front mended, and he was eager to start the day. When his driver came, he hurried off to fetch Annie and Clarabelle. Thomas also takes milk from the farms on his first train, so he was surprised to find Maurice the milk tanker fast asleep in the goods shed. Morning Maurice, he whistled. Is it that time already? yawned the tanker. Oh, hello Thomas. Nice to see you back. Glad to be back, smiled Thomas. Ready for our run? Oh, I don't think so, Maurice yawned. I'm waiting for Daisy. Thomas was confused. But the milk goes on the first train, and I'm the first train. The yard manager heard the commotion and came over. Haven't you seen the schedule? he asked. I just assumed we were back to the usual timetable, blushed Thomas's driver. This isn't right, huffed Thomas. I'm always first to leave. Fat controller's orders, shrugged the yard manager. Probably wants to ease you back into service. Why don't you go rest a little longer? But Thomas didn't do much resting as he enviously watched Daisy and Maurice leaving the station. A few hours later, Thomas was running happily up the line with Annie and Clarabelle. He whooshed through the tunnel and whistled at Terence before rounding the bend. He was excited and not taking care. Calm down, Thomas, called Annie. We're being bounced around back here. My poor wheels, wailed Clarabelle. The passengers were cross too. What a bumpy ride. Daisy never jolted about like this. Upon hearing that, Thomas slowed down at once. His smile fell to a frown, and he felt too sad to even whistle. Further up the line, a stubborn cow stood on the rails, constantly chewing grass. Thomas hissed steam and blew his whistle at it, but it was no good. Come on, move, move, he fumed. The cow took no notice. Green grass was more captivating than a blue tank engine. Thomas was so busy hissing at the cow, he didn't notice Daisy coming back up the line with Maurice. Save your steam, dearie, she called. I'll settle this. Daisy gave a mighty hoot of her horn, and the cow trotted quickly away. Oh, Bessie always seems to get loose, she chuckled. We must have a chat with the farm about her. Thomas said nothing. He just puffed away, annoyed. That night, Thomas backed into the sheds and found Daisy waiting. Thank goodness you're here, she smiled. Toby's stuck at the quarry. I was worried I'd be alone tonight. Oh, I'll bet you love to be alone anyway, scowled Thomas. Daisy was taken aback. I'm not sure I understand your meaning, dear. It's quite clear how perfectly run the branch has been in my absence, Thomas pouted. Everyone just loves you, don't they? Would you rather we let it fall into confusion? Daisy asked flatly. I'd rather it still be my branch line, grumbled Thomas. He shuffled into the darkness and promptly went to sleep. Leaving confused Daisy wide awake. The next morning Daisy went on her way with Maurice and the passengers. Thomas had been woken early and asked to sort out the trucks. He didn't like this one bit and banged about the yard. The trucks wisely kept quiet. Meanwhile, Terence the tractor was taking a cart of lumber into town. He was being driven by a young farmhand who wasn't taking much care. 
rather than using the level crossing, he drove Terence right across the rails. Ouch! Terence cried. Just because I can't go anywhere doesn't mean I should. The farmhand chuckled and ignored him. The cart jolted across the rails. Some of the lumber rattled loose, fell off the back and lay across the line. Neither Terence nor the farmhand noticed and they continued on their way. Daisy was coming back from the junction and was still in a foul mood. Who does he think he is? She grumbled to Maurice. Silly little tank engine. He's a funny sort, Maurice replied, but he does love this line. Daisy was about to reply when crunch. Ooh, she cried as she bumped off the rails and plowed into the field. Broken timber was caught in her axles. None of the passengers were hurt, but the line was well and truly blocked. Thomas was still banging about the yard when the station master came running. Daisy's off the line near Terrace's field, she called. Will you take Annie and Clarabelle to fetch the passengers? Thomas stopped grumbling at once. He coupled to the coaches and raced up the line. We're coming! We're coming! He puffed with determination. Thomas was relieved to see his passengers were unharmed, but felt most sorry for Daisy. She looked miserable. As the passengers climbed aboard the coaches, Duck arrived with the breakdown crane. Thomas rushed back to the top station as quickly as he could. Thank you, Thomas, smiled the passengers when he arrived. We're glad you could come to our rescue. Thomas smiled, but knew the work was far from over. Duck took Daisy to the works to be mended. While she was gone, Thomas worked extra hard doing Daisy's work as well as his own. Careful, laughed Maurice as he was rocketed up the line, or you'll churn me to butter. There was no major damage done, and Daisy returned to the sheds the following evening. Thank you for your help, she said to Thomas. You really do go the extra mile for your passengers. Ah, passengers, smiled Thomas. I'm sorry I was so cross. Maurice told me how splendid you've been, in spite of a few hiccups, he winked. Daisy blushed. I, I rather put that behind me, she stuttered. Then we'll say no more about it, or my prior rudeness and start anew, Thomas smiled. A grand idea, Daisy grinned, and the two friends went happily to sleep.